for the cost of the oil and my alabaster box. Uh, you turn to the other neighbor and say, you don't know how much it cost me to be here this morning. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God a hand clap. Hallelujah. This morning. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, just reflect. Hallelujah. Over everything that God has brought you through. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody just need to think about. Hallelujah. Oh God, hallelujah, everything that God has graced you through, hallelujah, hallelujah, somebody should be able to give him a little praise, amen, yeah, a big praise, I should say, uh, somebody should be able to give him some worship, hallelujah, hallelujah, somebody should just say, God, I thank you, I thank you, I thank you, I thank you, thank you, Lord, hallelujah, it costs something, turn your neighbor and say, it costs something, it costs something for me to be here, hallelujah, it costs something. Hallelujah. Glory, Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, it costs something. It costs something. Glory, Hallelujah. Yeah, Hallelujah. Just to make it one day, it costs something. Oh, Hallelujah. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Just to come into the house of God, it costs something. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. You, Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Oh, God, we bless you. Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. Oh God, we appreciate you this morning. We acknowledge you this morning. We hear you, God. We know you're speaking. We hear you. Oh God, we're listening. We're listening. We're listening this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're grateful people. We're grateful sons of the Lord in this morning. Hallelujah. We bless you today. We bless you today. Oh God, I thank you for my daughter, God. We bless you, God. Hallelujah. The deacon is the nation, God. Oh, God, we thank you for her gift. Oh, God, the elegance, Father God. The sincerity, God, Lord, in the way that she ministers, God. And we bless you for her. Oh, God, we bless you for Jesus on today. We bless you, God, that we are in the house of God one more time. We bless you, God. We all oh, hallelujah. 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 We don't take it for granted. Hallelujah. We don't take it for granted. Oh Lord, hallelujah, that we're able to raise our hands, hallelujah. We don't take it for granted that we're able to lift our voice. We don't take it for granted that we're able to walk around. Yes, Lord. Oh God, hallelujah. Hey, we bless you today, God, hallelujah. And we thank you, God. Oh God, for your oil. We ask you to keep pouring your oil on us on this morning. Oh God, bless us up, Father God. Rain on us, hallelujah, on this morning. Oh God, if any of us is dry, we pray that you can pour your oil on us. Oh God, hallelujah. Open up that heaven. Pour it on us on this. Some of us is dry. We need some oil, God. Oh God, hallelujah. Pour that oil on us this morning, God. Oh God, we receive it. God, gladly, God, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh God, hallelujah, God. Lord. Even under the banner, you are Jehovah Nisi. Hey, you are our banner. You're Jehovah's sick and you are our righteousness, God. And hallelujah. Oh, God. And Father God, we come under your banner today. And we just say hallelujah. We make all the praise to you. Hallelujah. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship from one accord. We give you praise this morning. Every praise. Every praise. Continue to bless the service because the service is already blessed. We thank you for everything that has transpired so far. Every clapping of the hand, every waving of the hand, every testimony, every song, every devotion. Hallelujah, God, Lord. Every reading of the word, God, Lord. Every tear. Hallelujah, God, Lord. Everything, God, Lord. We, we give it all unto you today. Hallelujah, God, Lord. Just rain. Hallelujah. And just, Father, God, we pray that you are sitting and seated and presiding over everything, God, Lord, and that it is a sweet, sweet smell in your nostrils. Forgive us for our sins. If there's anything that we have not confessed that we failed up to this point, we confess it now. We know we're not perfect. Hallelujah. You said there's none righteous. No, not one. And even our righteousness is us filthy rags. So, God, we ask you, Lord, to forgive us. Oh, God, for all of our trespasses, even as we forgive those that trespass against us. And as we prepare just to listen to the word for a few minutes, we it's not a temptation. Deliver us from evil. We pray that we don't get tired. We pray that we don't tune you out. We pray that we hear something from you today. 
Speak to us, God, Lord, even as we open up the Holy Writ. Yes, oh, God, give us the word of wisdom, even now in Jesus' name. Transform every darkness into light. Hallelujah, even now every shadow. We pray you permeate it, God, with your divine light. Yes, God. Oh, yes. God, because you are light. Hallelujah. And we pray, God, that we are light. You are the light of the world. Yes. So touch you, little clay. Let it only say what you would have them to say. Yes, even now in Jesus' name, we pray. And I say amen. amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Let the church say amen, amen. one more time. For the Holy Spirit. Thank Glory you, Lord. to God. Thank you, Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. If you have your Bibles, amen, I want you just to pull them out. Your cell phone, your tablet, amen. However you follow the word of God, amen. We ask you, amen, just to get them out. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So you can hallelujah. Follow with us today. Glory to God. And if you have your Bibles, I want you to lift them in the air. Glory to God, like you just don't care. Yeah. Hallelujah. Wave them, amen, back and forth. <laughs> That's all right. Let them wave, amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I want you to repeat after me. Somebody say, this is my Bible. This is my Bible. There are many like it. There are many like it. But this one is mine. This one is I will read it. I will read it. See what it says. Yes, see what it I will says. study it. I will study it. And show myself approved. It's a lamp to my feet. It's a light into my path. And because of it, I am blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. If you turn to those holy Bibles again to the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 5. 2 Corinthians, chapter 5. Hallelujah. When we get there, just say, I have the word. I have the word. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. For we know that if our earthly house, this tent, is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan. Somebody groan. Somebody, somebody groan. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. How many people groan in this morning? Amen. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed with our habitation, which is from heaven. If indeed heaven been clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we who are in this tent grown, being burdened, not because we want to be unclothed, but further clothed, that mortality may be swallowed up by life. Now he who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who also has given the Spirit as a guarantee. Therefore, we are always confident, knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. Yes, Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, yes, well pleased, rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Therefore, we make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be well pleasing to Him. For we must all appear, somebody say all, all. appear before the judgment seat of Christ. That each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are well known to God. And I also trust are well known in your consciences. For we do not commend ourselves again to you, but give you opportunity to glory on our behalf, that you may have something to answer those who glory in appearance and not at heart. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. Or if we are of sound mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ constrains us because we judged us that if one died for all, then all died. And he died for all, that those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. May God have a blessing to the reading of this word. My God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And I've read the first 15 verses and hear it. Amen. And uh, if I had to put a title to this amen, sermon, amen, it would be, I don't mind. Well. I don't mind. <laughs> Hallelujah. Turn your neighbor and say, I don't mind. I don't mind. Turn your, your other neighbor, amen, on the other side and say, I hope you don't mind. I hope you don't <laughs> mind. Thank you, Jesus. Go to God. Go to God. 
Amen. I believe that we will all agree that the body of flesh is a heavy burden and the calamities of life are a heavy load. But we as believers groan. Somebody groan again. Groan. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody know what a groan is? Mm. Anybody ain't groan before? Yes. Thank you. We groan sometimes yes. when things get too rough, right? Yes, Lord. When things get too hard. We groan, amen, sometimes when things are heavy. Yes. If you go to the gym, for those of us that do go to the gym, amen, when you pick up weight, oh God, if you pick up a weight that is heavy, how many know a groan might just come out of your body? Yes. Whether you want to do it or not, you must, uh, all right, groan. We groan when things get heavy. Yes. And the scriptures are saying that as we as believers, we are groaning to get out of these natural bodies into our spiritual bodies. Wow. I don't know about you, but the older I get, the more I groan. Thank you, Jesus. Amen? While you're young, your body is perfect. When you start getting older, <laughs> things start falling apart. Amen. Joints start needing a little bit more WD-40. Wow. A little bit more oil. Glory <laughs> to God. You need a little bit more sleep. Yes. Amen? And you got to be a little bit more careful. Wow. You can't bend down and get up like you used to. <laughs> yes, amen. You can't cut the rug, amen, like you used to. Wow. You can't run as long as, as fast as you used to. Freaks. I know I'm up here by myself. Right? You, you can't see as well as you used to. Talk about it. You can't hear as well as you used to. Wow. Well. You can't. And then there's a lot of things. <laughs> yeah. But God, if you can't do as well as yes. you used to. So we start groaning. God, oh, I can't wait. Glory to God. Not that you want to go early. Yeah. Amen. But you know that there is something after this. Yes, Lord. Where we have bodies, amen, that we're not going to go through. We're not going to be limited by all of these physical shackles. Yes. Yes. We groan being burdened with a body of sin and because of the many corruptions remaining and raging within them, meaning our bodies. Yes. But one day, death will strip us of the clothing of flesh My God. and of all of the comforts of this life as well as in all of our troubles here below. Yes. But we praise God that believing souls, us, those of us that call ourselves Christians, amen, shall be clothed with garments of praise Thank you, Jesus. and robes of righteousness and glory. Yes, God. The present graces and comforts of the Holy Spirit are earnest of everlasting grace and comfort. And though God is with us here by his spirit and in his ordinances when we, amen, invoke, amen, communion and baptism and things like that, yet we are not with him as we hope to be. Meaning that we can't just say God is sitting right there. Wow. We can't see God. And if you, see, if you say you see God, you're a liar. Because the Bible says you can't see God in the way. Welcome to God. And then in the way we God the Father. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. However, glory to God. Hmm. We have to understand that God gave us something and what he has given us is called faith. Thank you, Jesus. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. Not seen. Yes, Lord. And so we know that God exists not because we have seen him physically, but by faith. Glory to God. Praise God. We know that he is because of what he has already allowed us to see. Yeah. The natural. Amen. The spiritual things. Amen. His word. Amen. Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. God has put things in place. Amen. So that we can know that he is. Glory to God. Praise God. And so we accept the fact that God exists by faith. Hallelujah. Yes, yes Jesus. Yes. Just follow me here. Glory to God. Yes. Faith. But we operate by faith, yes. not by sight. Glory to God. Let me say it again. Faith is for this world. Yes. Sight is for the other world. Wow. Wow. I didn't say the next world because the other world is, exists right now. We're only a dimension away from heaven. Yes. We're only a dimension away from the spirit world. We're only a dimension away, amen, from the angels, amen, and all that. They're here right now. They're in this in the sanctuary. But we can't see them because they exist 
in another dimension. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Follow me here. Follow me here. I wrote the book, Interdimensional Prayer. When you pray, don't think it's just words that's going into an empty vacuum and, and fades away. When you pray, your words go when this real prayer is so deep because your words leave your lips. The sound goes into the natural, and if it's real prayer, it goes into another dimension. Yes, Lord. Yes. If you are not praying effectively and fervently and real, and God is not receiving your prayer, so to speak, then your prayers never make it into the yes. next dimension. Yes. Glory, glory, yes. Your prayer can go up as far as the ceiling and come back down. And God says, that's why the scripture says, I never hurt you. And he say, people are going to say, but did I do this? And I did all these great things and I prophesied in your name. Remember I prayed in front of 10,000 people? He says, I never knew you. Depart from me. Do your prayers make it into heaven? I hope they do. Glory to God. Amen. But for you to be sure, you have to live a life that is pleasing yeah. and acceptable yes. unto the Lord yes. uh, for his God. But we operate by faith. God gave us something for this dimension, and that thing is called faith. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes, we can pray and believe that you hear our prayers and ask our prayers, not because we seen somebody and an angel came like in Daniel 10 to Daniel and said, oh, he heard your prayer. We know most of us are not going to get that. Huh. We believe by faith. Not by sight. Yes, sir. <laughs> when we get into the next dimension, we're not going to need faith. Yes. Because you're going to be able to see things All right. as they are. Yes, so faith is just for this dimension. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Everybody preach faith, everybody faith. And I had to tell the preacher one time, I said, You ain't going to have faith when you get to heaven. Nope. What do you mean? You ain't going to need it. Exactly. God is there. Yes. Jesus oh, is there. God. You need faith. Just for your physical, and then just for this earth realm. Yeah. Just for this dimension. But when we get into the next world, see, the next world, the next dimension is the real world. Yeah. This is temporary. Yes. Your body is temporary. This life and all the toys that come with it is temporary. I don't know about you, but that should make you rejoice. I'm glad about that. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. I, I ain't got to worry about no nine to five. I ain't going to be worried about all of this crazy stuff. No Amen. We're going to be immortal, eternal beings. That's yes, amazing. My God. For we operate by faith, not by sight. So yes. it's for our surmise this morning that it is our duty and it is in our interest to walk by faith. Yes, my God, my God. Till we live by sight. All right. <laughs> 2 Corinthians 5 7, I just read it. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Not by sight. Hallelujah. And since we admittedly go from one day to the next without knowing what the next day is going to hold, why don't we give God the glory in the fact that it is He and He alone that gives us the grace to go through each and every day without fail? My Lord, my Lord. Mm. Why do somebody have to pump you? Right. Come on, come on. Why does somebody have to cry and do all this and yell at you and spit at you? Shouldn't it, isn't it in our best interest right. to give God the glory? When I was little, and then one of the songs my mom used to say when she was a rise and shine and give God the glory, glory, rise and shine and give God the glory, glory, rise and shine and give God the glory, glory, children of the Amen. Amen. And I learned that in church. Amen. Glory to God. And thank you for that. You know, that every day, we should give them the glory. Yeah. Do you know that the flowers play so every day? Yeah. The flowers go down at nighttime where the sunlight don't come. But when the sun comes, do you know that the flowers prick it up? Mm. Do you know that? Yeah. There's some flowers, amen, that they say there's an audible humming going to God. The trees, yeah. they whistle. Thank you, the birds, they start. Yes, yes, the yes. ocean and the seas start praising God. The mountains, the Bible says, start declaring God's glory. Yeah. Do you know every morning, every day, amen, we should be giving God a new praise. Hallelujah. We should be giving God a new worship. Jesus. We should be giving God the glory. Yes. Because he is the ancient of days. Yes. The everlasting and everlasting. He is. He is. He has always been. Yes. Glory to God. 
why? We should give God glory every day without fail. For his grace. Grace is when God gives us what we don't deserve. Mercy is when God doesn't give us what we do deserve. Hallelujah. And how you know some of us are living by grace and mercy? We have things that we don't deserve, some of us. It's by his grace that some of us are married. We don't deserve it. But it ain't going to God. He graced us. It's by his grace that some of us have children. Some of us don't deserve to have children. It's by his grace that some of us have a family. It's by his grace that we're able to take care of ourselves. It's by his grace that we're healthy. Yes. Grace is when God gives you what you don't deserve. Please hear me. Some of us have abused our bodies. Some of us don't deserve it. Glory to God, but we're healthy. We're able to walk with his others. Glory to God, they have never done anything. They can't even get out of the bed. Yes. They can't even see. They can't even walk. Glory to God, they can't, listen, there's a lot of issues, can I keep it real? People can't have children, people can't do the things that we take for granted! Yes, Lord. Come on, sir. It's by His grace yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. that we have what we have. Yes. And then some of us have been grace, and we complain about the grace of God. Right. And God is looking at you and saying, you're complaining about what somebody yes. over there is earnestly praying and wishing that they had. It's fine. Glory to God. I know sometimes it get rough. Some of us going to God, oh, this job is rough. Oh, these kids is on my last nerve. But somebody wish they had your job. Somebody wish they had at least one of your children. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Keep it in perspective and realize that if it wasn't for the grace of God, grace of where would I be? Well, Mercy is when God doesn't give you what you deserve. Yes. Amen. If you, I mean, praise God, Deserve the death penalty. Glory to God. How you know? And then right before they're about to chop your head off, if you live in the 1700s, you might say, mercy. Mm. And then how you know only the king was able to come come out and say, Amen, I'm going to pardon Sir Lancelot, whatever the case is. Glory to God. He would clement, he would give clemency on what we call mercy. Thank you, Jesus. That's what God does for us. Because some of us deserve to have HIV right now. Some of us deserve, amen, to have all kind of venereal disease. Some of us deserve, amen, to be living in the street. Some of us, listen, God is merciful. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes, he is. Again, nobody should have to pump you to praise God, yes. to worship God. There's no way you should be sitting on God, especially when his presence is in the building. My God, my God, There's no way my God. you should not be able to say something. God, I love you. God, I thank you. God, I give you praise this morning. Yes. God, we honor you. You should be able to say something. Yes. Turn your neighbor and say, you should be able to say something. You should be able to say, say something. My goodness, hasn't he been good to you? Yes. He's been too good to us. Come on, you got to be able to say something. Yes. I don't know about you, but when people are good to me in the natural, I say thank you. Yes. yes. Hey, they, they say, oh, 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 no, listen, thank you, man. Thank you, sister. Thank you, brother. Yes. I appreciate it. Amen. I like that. Glory to God. We need to know how to open our mouth. Yes. Let God know you appreciate his blessing. Hallelujah. God, you fed, you fed me every day. I'm 50 years old. You fed me every day, 365 a year, days a year, three times a day, all for 50 years. Yes, Lord. Grateful. God, I love you. Love you, Lord. I'm grateful. Well, Ooh, you. Jesus. Jesus. It is by his grace that we live yeah. and move yeah. and have our being, is it not? Yeah. Well, yeah. And again, so again, we should be boasting, boasting. more on the Lord for all of the wonderful things that he has done concerning us. My God, my God. We boast on everything else except God. Uh, well, all right. Oh, child, it was me. I went to school for this. I did this. My mama was this. Oh, my daddy. God says, how about you give me some credit? All right. It was God. It's God that gives you the natural abilities. You know why Moses got in trouble? And then you know why he could not go in the promised land with the people? It's because he did not give God the credit. Yes. He, God said, speak to the rock. Him and his arrogance, he struck the rock. He got frustrated. 
Don't let people frustrate you out of your promise. Well, he got frustrated. Yeah. And he picked a rock. Okay, you rappers, do my side, pick a rock for you. And he got out of outside of himself. Right. Yes. Because Moses normally was good. Amen? But how many know that one time God said, okay, player, I got you. Mm. <laughs> I'm going to teach you. And, then, and it wasn't necessarily about Moses, it was for the people to understand. Yeah. When you get out of line, there may be consequences. Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> and I'm talking about Moses, the real man of God. God chastised him. Well, you would think that God, Moses, that God would have a little clemency, a little mercy, <laughs> a little grace. He said, nope. Moses handed off to Joshua. Get your body up, behind up in that hill. I'm going to put your body in this rock. Your days are done. Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah. And we have to remind us. We should be boasting in God, not our own abilities. Right. Hallelujah. Boasting in Him. Give Him. God the glory. Yes, Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All the wonderful things that He has done. So many of us take life for granted. Yes, Lord. But you know that the Bible says He, 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 oh, he gives warning before destruction? Yes. That's right. He sure does. Yes. Yes. Say it again. Hallelujah. Yes. So the problem is we don't care enough to well, listen well. to what God is saying in this season. And so the devil come in unawares, using the biblical word, and he either kills us, steals from us, yeah. or destroy our lives and purpose. Yes. yes, yes. That's what the Bible says. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Amen. Glory to God. So watch this. Florida just got hit, right, by a major, a monster category five hurricane, right? Yes, Lord. Hurricane named Ian. And the inhabitants of the edge of Florida that was forecasted to get hit the hardest was warned and told to evacuate, wasn't they? Amen. But many people did not heed the warning. The number of confirmed deaths across three states continues to climb multiple days after Ian then hit uh, shore in Florida. They say that the, the, the hurricane was 150 miles an hour or more. 240 kilometer winds. That's a lot. Yes, Lord. I've been, I haven't been in a hurricane like that, but I've been in high winds. I want to tell you, that's a lot. Have you ever been on a, a tar pit with a, a C-130 or a certain jets and all of that? And then the wind will literally almost take you off the ground. So imagine 150 miles per hour wind. Jesus. But because of technology and what we know today, these people were given warning. They said, get out of there. Get out. A storm is coming. Yes, Lord. Something is coming, and I guarantee you, you don't want to be here when it hits. Well, wow. <laughs> glory to God. And then the winds came, it, was, it leveled homes, it, it uh, unleashed floods, it knocked out power to 2.6 million homes and businesses. It killed 94 people in Florida, it could be more by now. Five in North Carolina, and one in Virginia is over 100 some people, it could be more by now. Glory to God. Three people also died in Cuba. Glory to God. Glory to God, which Ian barreled over before the U.S., according to official state totals. But the flooding and destruction left behind by Ian has made it difficult to know how many people have actually died in the storm. How many of these numbers are actually going to get higher? Yes. Yes. But somebody said that they were warned. They were warned. Hallelujah. They were warned. Praise God. They were warned, man, to get out of there. Amen. Praise God. Glory to God. It's one of the most deadly hurricanes. Amen. It's in the top five. Glory to God. Amen. In 2017, Hurricane Irma killed 129 people. Glory to God. Um, in 2012, we had Hurricane Sandy, which killed 117 people. Amen. And in 2005, Hurricane Katrina killed about 1,800 people. And I know that one intimately. I was still in the military at that time, and we, amen, were deployed, amen, to Hurricane Katrina in Louisiana, and it was crazy. All right, I've seen some stuff that will stick with me for the rest of my life. I made some connections, amen, some friends, amen, that were going to be friends with me for the rest of my life. But when somebody tells you to get out of the way, a storm is coming, how many you know you need to listen? Yes. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. The winds are in the hands of God, the Bible says. Praise God. And the rains and the waters and the seas and the oceans, glory to God. And how many you know, glory to God, if you don't believe in God, you will once you encounter one of these storms. Yes, Lord. Yes, uh, yes, I wish y'all yes. hear me this morning because we all have a storm to go yes, through in life. Yes, 
Amen. If you haven't gone through one, just live a little bit longer because one is coming, sweetheart. Lord God, you either in a storm, you just came out of a storm, or you're about to go in a storm. Praise God. Hallelujah. I remember one time in the military, we had went to South Dakota. We were doing an exercise, and we were on a mountain called the Black Hills. It's a very historic mountain. It's where part of the Civil War, different things, amen, happened, amen, with Native Americans, whatever. And we were on there for an exercise, and we had to stay on that mountain over, overnight. And one night, it rained, it held, it snowed, um, it was um, electrical um, um, storms, um, there's a name for that, glory God, and there were hurricanes that hit the mountain. When we were already on the mountain, they said you had to shelter or place, mm. all right? The hell was coming down like as big as a baseball. All of this happened on the mountain overnight. Glory to God. All right? And so some of these big, tough soldiers, glory to God, amen, praise God, amen, they knew I was Minister Larry at the time. I was not Pastor Larry, I was Minister Larry at the time, glory to God. And they knew me, glory to God, and, and my stance on God. And he was coming into the tent. I was a lieutenant at the time. Hey, LT, can I stay in here with you? Sure. Amen. After a while, amen, because... Tits is almost being rolled off the ground, and you hear it hitting the, the vehicles and all that. These big, strong men that be using four letter words and all this other stuff, amen, got very spiritual on me. Jesus. Somebody need to hear what I'm saying. Yeah. LT, you think we can pray? You think we need to pray? I said, I've been praying. <laughs> I've been praying, Sarge. I don't know. Hey, this is going to be all right. I don't think God brought me to this hill. To, to, this is going to be the end of my story. Glory to God. We're going to make you do this. Glory to God. And then, but these men and women were visibly shaken. Yes, yes Lord. Yes. Visibly shaken. And I remember praying and playing with them a little bit. You know, you know me, I'm a sister. You know, I was singing some songs. And then we had a chaplain, but she wasn't very chaplainly. Yeah, man, not every chaplain is very Christianly, whatever. But, uh, you know, but they were relying on me to provide that spiritual comfort. I'm just keeping it real. All right. So, you know, and, man, and so when we came out of that, the aftermath, the next day, and man, the, um, our military vehicles, and man, the winter cars that we had was dented from the from all of that. And the next day, it made it up to 87 degrees. It was the weirdest thing in the world. We went through all of these different types of things. And so I keep bring that up, and then glory to God, amen, because for those of us, those people, amen, that act like they don't believe in God and all of that, just let a storm happen. All right. Well, yes. Some people say, I don't know why God would allow that. How many know if God does not allow some people to go through some very hard things, they will never look to God yes. in faith. They will never know what faith is. Yes. You don't know what it's like. To, to need God until you put in the storm. All right. My God. Until the doctor gives you a diagnosis for some people. Until they put that eviction notice on your door for some people. And then until things get hard for some people, some of us would never call out to God. Wow. If, if, if God just allowed everything to be okay in, the, in some of our lives, I mean, oh, we would never give Him credit. Yes. Yes, that's true. And we would never give Him glory. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise God. And many of us say things like, if I just would have known that certain negative things were going to happen in my life, I would have done some things different. Right. <laughs> but how many of you know that that's not necessarily true for many of us? Thank you, Jesus. Because some of us get warned every day. Every Sunday we get warned. Praise God. Because God, time after time, through his word, through nature, through divine revelation, through dreams, through spiritual gifts, and even the arts warn us, yeah. but we sometimes don't want to miss it. Yeah. Amen? The man of God said they was going through a hard thing. Lord God, and he said he was sitting under the tree and heard the birds, and the birds encouraged us. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if y'all been listening to testimony service. Yeah. How many know God will use nature even? Yeah. Yes. Uh, somebody needs to say amen right there. Yeah. To encourage you. God can talk to you through anything. Do you know that God can use an ass? Amen. To talk to you. Yeah. Praise God. Glory to God. Praise God. And amen. How I many I don't I this I don't need an ass to talk to me. Amen. And when all I need is God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Yeah. All I want, amen. I want to be, amen, so submitted that he all, all he gotta do is speak to me once. Yes. Yes. I don't even want him to speak to me twice and three times. One time. Is all I need. Yes. Glory to God. Praise God. So, and, and, and I heard that there was an elderly woman. There was an elderly woman. 
Glory to God. And she refused to leave her house even though she was disabled and in a wheelchair. I'm talking about Hurricane Ian. I'm talking about Florida. Glory to God. And so the rain came. And the floods rose. And the water rose so high that it was to her neck. And that she could be heard uh, uh, screaming for her life. Help! Help! Somebody help me! Help! But this woman was told to leave. But she decided to stay. And she, amongst many people, should have been first to leave because not only was a storm coming, but she was compromised already physically. So they say she was in her house in a wheelchair and the water came to her neck while she was in the wheelchair. Can you imagine the fear? Mm. Not just the water, but if you've ever been in a storm, it's scary. The sounds and the trees yeah. breaking and the, and the, oh, it's just, yeah. listen, 150 miles per hour winds, it's, it's, it's just louder than I can do with this microphone. Yeah. And she was screaming. And so what they said is her, I think it's her grandson, if I'm not mistaken, or someone, nephew, came to the house. Amen. It, it had, he said he had a thought. Let me go check on her. Glory to God. Praise God. And he, and he narrow, narrowly saved her life. Now what he said, but she was screaming for her life. How many of many of us, glory to God, don't think, amen, that we need to listen? Amen. Amen. Until we get into a place where we have no choice. Amen. How many know that we are all smarter than that? Hallelujah. Turn your neighbor and say, you're smarter than that. We need to learn how to listen to God. We should be humble enough Thank you, Jesus. to listen to God. Somebody say the first time. The first time. Hallelujah. We don't need the waters to rise. We don't need to almost be drowned. Glory to God. Praise God. God bless you. Amen. Praise God. Amen. When it comes to certain things, how many know some of us are so daring? We're so arrogant. Yeah. Amen. We talk about the whole sex thing. We still go ahead and shack up and do the sex thing and all of that. It ain't that going to happen to me? We talk about all these different things. Don't do it. Don't listen to certain music. Stop smoking weed. Stop doing crack and cocaine and heroin and all that. Oh, I'm, I'm special. <laughs> Glory to God. Praise God. Glory to God. Stop smoking cigarettes. Stop doing these things. Oh, um, well, we got to do something. And it's all good until the doctor say cancer. Well. Or whatever the case is. Glory to God. And we say, why? Why would God allow? And God said, why don't you just listen? Why can't we just be obedient? Praise God. Many of us would not have to be saved if we just listen to the voice of God. Yes, Lord. The voice of God, you know what it is? It's the word of God. Amen. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, faith cometh by hearing. Hearing by the word hearing of God. Hearing by the word of God. Yes. So we gather to hear the word of God. To gather strength and encouragement necessary to talk. That's why we gather here together. Every Sunday and every Tuesday, whatever hour of the day, go hear me. Amen? Praise God. Faith comes by hearing. Hear by the word of God. The Bible says, forsake not the assembly of yourselves together, as some people are doing, especially in 2022. Words of faith is what directs us. Words of faith is what drives us. And words of faith should be what directs us? Let me get uh, four people up here. Can I get four people up here? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Come on, brother man. Come on, brother man. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, hallelujah. Um, since everybody's face down, you can come this way to it, face out that way. Everybody face out that way. I want everybody to close their eyes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, I want you to walk forward very slowly. Walk, close your eyes. Walk forward. I didn't say stop walking. I, I didn't say move over. I didn't say you say keep your eyes closed. I didn't say move the chair back. All right, stop, stop. All right, come back. 
Come back. Go to God. Come back. Come back. No, you open your eyes and come back to the original position. Go to God. All right. I want you to close your eyes this time. Go to God. Y'all saw what happened, right? They ran into some 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 things, right? Some of them did, right? Why? Because no one told them to do anything differently, right? Amen. I think one of them, I think Brother Landon was cheating. He had his eyes open. Go to God. Amen. This time, I want y'all to keep your eyes closed, all right? And just listen to my direction. Okay. Walk forward. Turn to your right. Your right. Your other right. Now walk forward. No, no, no. <laughs> okay, stop. Okay. <laughs> Turn to your left. <laughs> okay. Uh, wait. Okay, stop. <clears throat> Y'all understand what I'm saying? Go to God. Turn to your other left. Okay. Now walk forward. Go to God. Praise God. All right, stop. Praise God. All right, give them a hand. Give them a hand. Glory to God. I'm going to stop right there. Glory to God. But they make my point. Faith coming by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. How can we know which way to go if we don't hear from God? And how do you know everybody hears something different? I said, turn to your left. Somebody turn to the right. Amen. I said, turn to the left. Somebody turn all the way to the left. To the, you know, glory to God. How do you know? We need to hear the word of God. We need to hear his voice and to hear it clearly. Yes, Lord. <laughs> Understand what I'm saying? Sometimes I think that I know, amen, what's supposed to happen. But how do you know God will make me think about things just like what we just did? Say, you don't understand, son. Right. You don't understand it like I understand. I know what Prophet Joanna would do when she hears turn to the left. Amen. And I know what Brother Dustin would do when she hears turn to the left. And I know what Minister Green would do when I see turn to the left. And I know what Brother Landon would do. They all would do something slightly different, even though it's the same word. Yes, sir. Oh yes. That's good. That's good. My, my, my. We can all hear the same word, and, and it can be applied differently to our spirit because we all have different experiences. Maybe when somebody was little, when they said turn to the left, amen, and they turn all the way and don't stop. Amen? If you're in the military, you know turn to the left, it's just one turn to the left and stop. Amen? But if you know, amen, you have a different experience, you might say turn to the left, and then, oh, he must want me to walk to the left. I didn't say walk, just turn. <laughs> I know it's not crazy, but that's what basic training is about. They teach you how to march. Amen. Because everybody would be going, you know, like, and you know, and, and it's funny because the drill sergeant would be doing just what I just said. Did I tell you to move? Did I tell you to walk? Did I tell you? Left face. Right face. But in the beginning, people can't do that. Left face. <laughs> like, soldier, what are you doing? Stop. Glory to God. And it's crazy. And I get in trouble because we be laughing like, you be crazy. Oh, you sergeant going to get him. She having a hard time. But by the end, everybody can understand the directions. One with one voice. Left, 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 right, left, faith. Everybody doing the same thing. You see, like, ooh, look at that left page. You know, right faith. You know, blah, blah, blah. About faith. Everybody understand what the commands mean. And we have to listen to God, understand his voice, hear his voice, and know the word of God so in depth that we can understand his commands. Hear his voice. That's what the Bible says. My sheep hear my voice. Come on, preach with me this morning. Yes. My sheep hear my voice. No other voice will they will they follow. Right. Uh, I want y'all to follow me this morning. Glory to God. We walk by faith, not by, not by sight. We can't see what's going to happen tomorrow. Well, I'm sure that if that woman that was in Florida, that elderly woman that was in a wheelchair, would have knew that she was going to embarrass herself. And almost died in that storm. She would say, you know what? I'm going to get on out of here. Let me go wheelchair. Try to wait for me, John. Glory to God. But she decided to stay. Thinking that she can beat the storm. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Some of y'all going to get this on your way home. Glory to God. But the voice of God is the word of God. <laughs> and the word of God should be what's directing us. The key to making it to the promise is in how much you believe that God wants to prosper you and not to harm you. 
and to bring the others back to him. Moses leading them, he had to believe that everything that God told him to do was for a reason. Amen. Amen. He had to do some stuff where it probably didn't make no sense to us in 2022. Well. And how many know that's how our life is? Amen? Yes. Glory to God. Amen. We come into, amen. We've been uh, in the ministry for 10 years physically. Glory to God. It's been times when we didn't know how we were going to make it. Thank amen. You. Even now, God is doing some, listen, it's a faith walk. It's a faith walk. Yes. That's why so many people quit and don't even get in there or even start. Amen. Because they got to see it first. And I tell people, if you got to see it, then God ain't calling you. Amen. Amen. We walk by faith. Not by, Not by sight. And yeah. even when the storms are raging, you still got to believe that God is in control. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes. God got this. And he's going to give us his that. He has an expected end. Romans 14, 23 says, And he that doubteth is dead to be eaten, because he eateth not of faith. For whatever is not of faith is sin. So if you're doing things because of what you see, you might be in sin. Even if it looks like it's working. Y'all better watch your judgment on people. Oh, they ain't doing this. And, oh, God must be with them. No, they might have hit the lottery or they might have just such and such a kid. All right, but just give it a minute. God knows. Yes, he who's does. walking by faith. Amen. And who's walking by sight. <laughs> Doubt and unbelief are not of faith. Amen. You know that? Glory to God. Lust and envy are not of faith. Low self esteem and insecurity is not of faith. Or not thoughts of faith. Let me say it like that. You know that fear is not of faith? Nope. nope. Glory to God. God says, but God didn't give us a spirit of fear, right? Power of love. But power of love and a sound one. So fear is not of faith, it's not, of, of not from a person that has a, a spirit of faith. And these thoughts come into our mind all the time, right? The answer is half right. Because the scripture teaches us that our thoughts are not originated in our minds, but they're originated in our hearts. Right. Amen? There is, um, there's a, there is a sense in which our speech reveals what is really in our heart. Yeah. Amen. You can tell what a person, amen, who a person is by what they say. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus said, out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. That's Matthew 12, 34. All right. Glory to God. Amen. Some people tell you, well, oh, they're just having a bad day. No, that's how they really yeah. felt. Yeah. When a person argues, amen, a lot of times they're being very, very truthful. They've been wanting to say that for a long time. Yeah. Sometimes. Sometimes it's hurting, yeah. amen. We got, but you can tell a lot. But we got. Praise God. He's like, oh, I didn't know you thought about it like that. I didn't know that's how you felt about it. But we got. But we got. Amen. But the scriptures teaches us that thoughts are not originated in our minds, but originated in our hearts. But James says that there's another sense in which our tongue controls our heart. Mm. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I remember when I was um, working, I'm to say I just had a job. I know a lot of people look at us on Sunday. Amen. And I was working at a certain job, glory to God. Amen. And I'm not going to say when or where. Amen. But I used to get a call every time that I would hear certain language. Amen. And I even took it up the chain. Amen. Glory to God. Like, listen, you know, especially if it's directed at me, you ain't going to talk to me like that. Go to God, praise God, and you know, all of this kind of stuff like that. And one person almost lost their job. I said, No, I don't want him to lose his job, but don't you ever talk to me like that again. And you know, and, and such and such and such and such. Amen. And these four letter words, especially, you understand what I'm saying? Glory to God. And then invest your spirit. Yes. You're trying to be a man of God or a woman of God. And how many know we're in the world, but we're not of the world? Go to God. And it's hard sometimes because God will allow you to be in an environment that's not always godly. Hallelujah. What do you do? <laughs> when you're in an environment that people don't care about your God, Amen. they don't care about your Bible, they don't care nothing about your Jesus in your, in your Christian status. Go to God. But I would get a call and, and it was used constantly. But but after a couple of weeks, I'm gonna say months really, after I became accustomed to hearing it. Anybody ever been there? Amen. I became accustomed to hearing it and, and after a while, you know what happened? It doesn't repulse you as much. <laughs> you just kind of get used to it. Go to God. And after a certain amount of time, you know what happened? That word or those words would pop into my mind when I would get angry. Glory to God. Glory to God. Or, or when I would get startled or whatever the case is. Glory to God. Even though I was a man of God, I believe God had delivered me from that, but because I was in the environment, right. 
Please hear me. Glory to God. These words were popping to my mind. And it's like, ooh, if I wasn't careful, it might just slip out. Right. Is that the man of God? Praise God. And you have to catch yourself because that's what you hear all day long. And people are responding like that. And that's why the Bible says bad company can corrupt good character. Yes. Amen. Yes. Even I don't care who you are. Glory to God. Praise God. Amen. But although I didn't use it, the temptation was certainly there. So watch this. I went from repulsion to tolerance to temptation in a few months. You say it like that. Glory to God. Over the span of time, I gained a new appreciation for Christian people who work in sinful environments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Year in and year out, and yet they're able to control their speech. My hat is off that people that's able to work in a really worldly environment that still be able to control their tongue. Are you here with me this morning? How many know that has to be a constant battle? Some of you live in a house, y'all married to people, glory to God, that have this kind of language, glory to God. Y'all have real close friends and family and, and mothers and fathers and sisters and brothers. You know, sometimes we have to be in certain situations. What do you do? My hat is off to you when you're able, amen, to guard your mouth. Thank you, Jesus. You know that takes discipline. Amen. It takes mastery over yourself. You have to be able to master your body. Glory to God. How do you know that we need to stop allowing our, our tongue to control us? Yes. We need to stop allowing our mouths to control our spirits. Our spirits is supposed to rule our mouths. Yes, sir. Amen, somebody. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Y'all don't even know why I'm not. I'm not, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> Glory to God. God is so good. <laughs> but it's a constant battle. I got to be good. Mr. Allen's telling me to be good. I'm going to be good. <laughs> James Hughes, three analogies to illustrate the importance of taming the tongue. In, in James 3 3, he uses the horse's bit. Anybody here ever read a yes. horse before? Yes. You put the bit in their horse. It says when we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal. It's just that in there. When you give a little bit to the right, they go to the right. Yeah. Little to the left. When you pull up, they'll hold up. When you, amen. When you, amen. They'll go forward. Amen. And all of that. Amen. The, the, the horse is so sensitive. Glory to God. Amen. And there is a sense in which our speech reveals what's in our heart. Yes, our tongue does the same thing. Yeah. Jesus said, out of the overflow of the heart of our speech. Matthew 12, 34. But James says, there is another sense in which our tongue controls our heart. Just as a small bit can determine the direction of a powerful horse, we can manage how we think, feel, and behave by controlling our tongues. We're not always going to be able to stop what the devil wants to suggest to our mind, but we can control what comes out of our mouths. Anybody yeah. believe that? Yeah. Yeah. So stop honoring the devil by speaking his words and his truths. Oh Hallelujah. Mm. Glory to God. Glory to God. Listen. The other thing that James used is the rudder of a ship. James 3, still in James chapter 3, it says, uh, or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boats. That's James chapter 3, verses 4 to 5. The rudder it's tiny compared to the mass of boilers that power the ship, but the rudder determines the direction and ultimate destination. And man, I'm always, I, I'm put back when I hear people talk about their anointing. And my wife will tell you over the years, and man, I've stopped people from coming here because they talk like that. Glory to God. I've canceled services. Glory to God. And man, when you're going to call me and talk to me about my anointing, you take your anointing somewhere else. Glory to God. Amen? Because we are anointed by the Holy Spirit. You ain't nothing special. You ain't nothing special. Take your anointing and go follow and whatever you think you have. Glory to God. Amen? And invariably, all of these people, you never hear from them again. They had a little ministry for a year or two. They got big in their own life. Then you don't hear from them. They fall off. You and your anointing. My anointing. Apostle, you need to understand the anointing in my life. Shut up. Make your boast in the Lord. Wow. Don't talk to me like that. You ain't nothing special. 
I knew you before you got in church. You forgot my anointing. Glory to God. Stay humble. Yes. We are anointed by God yes. to do what we do. Yes. If God's will anoint it, ain't nothing going to happen. Right. Unless God build the house, those who labor, labor in vain. Yes. Uh, you know, if the anointing don't fall, amen, we ain't going to do anything. It's the anointing that makes the difference. Yes. <sighs> we got to be careful. Yes. They tell me, get you in trouble. Yes. <laughs> Your anointing. You better stop taking credit for the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. The spark that begins a forest fire is the last thing that James uses to can talk about the tongue. It says, Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole person, sets the whole course of his life on fire, and it itself sets. Or is set on fire by hell. James, the half brother of Jesus, is teaching us. Glory to God. Amen. Praise God that the tongue can be set on fire by hell. Yes. You know, uh, uh, amen. One one word, amen, can bring down a whole church. Yes, it can bring down a family. It can tear up a family. Yeah, yeah. Listen, one conversation, one allegation, one listen. Uh, uh, the tongue is very mighty. Yes, That's why you got to be so careful how you carry yourself. Uh, please hear me. Glory to God. Praise God. Amen. But recent fires that have ravaged thousands of acres of timber and dozens of homes in Arizona and on, and you can say California and other different places, were started by just one match. Yes. One match can tear down a whole forest. <laughs> just one tiny spark. So much damage can be done by just one little word or a seemingly innocent phrase. Do you know that curse words are witchcraft taught to humanity by demons? Amen. They're witchcraft. They're words used in witchcraft. Glory to God. Which is why we can curse in different languages the same word. All right. Russia, Russians, Arabs, they use the same four other words that we do. And you know what? Everybody used the name of Jesus too. Mm-hmm. And a curse in a way that is not in the world to his name. Yeah. Yeah. You can look at something in Spanish, you can look at something in German, you can look at something. Everybody say the name of Jesus, and it's not in a God given glory way. Look at African, look at African stuff. They use the name of Jesus, even though they speak a different language. Crazy. Right? Not in a God given way. Look at God. Curse words are witchcraft. And that's why we need to stop cursing. Stop cursing. Stop listening to things with curse words in it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you know, it, you know, I should never share anything, glory to God, amen. And if I do, amen, I should put a disclaimer if it's something real, glory to God, amen. But I should never be sharing music with curse words. I should never be, amen, propagating stuff, glory to God, amen, where all of this witchcraft and all of this sorcery, amen, is in it. It can turn your spirit. I know I'm the only one. And then, listen, I guarantee you that when you get mad and angry, sometimes the curse word is boiling up in your spirit, and if you say it, it feels so good. Yes, yes. Anybody hear me? Yes. It's just me. It feels good because something spiritual just happened. Demons are manifesting every time you curse. You want peace in your house? You better stop that cussing. My God. Stop cussing at your kids. Stop cussing at your, your wife or your husband. Cussing at your friends. And then if they talk about you got my oh show no no shit. Man, shut, shut up. Speaking in tongues. After you give him God uh, the devil glory. Words have power is what I'm trying to say. We all know the story, the classic movie Born with the Wind. Mm-hmm. Right? And it is a it's a famous movie, right? But a lot of people are saying it's, it's famous for another reason. We know the famous line from Rick Butler where he says, frankly, my dear, I don't, don't say it. I don't give a fruit, don't say it. Do y'all, do y'all know the rest of that? Yes. If you don't kiss, if you don't know, ask your mommy when you leave. Glory to God. She'll tell you. And they say that, glory to God. Yeah, when the movie was released six decades ago, there was a preacher in Boston that objected to the use of that one four-letter word in the movie. He insisted that 
if that one word were permitted there, there would be no end to the profanity that would be allowed into all movies ever since then. And how many know he was a prophet? He was right. Before that, there was no cursing in any movie until going to Gone with the Wind. Do you know that? And after he said that, people was like, oh, that's, that is so liberating. Everybody walking around there, frankly, Charlotte, I know, boom, boom, boom. Oh, that boy, God. It was liberating. Ever since then, the movie industry changed. Started by one word. One word. Huh. It started from something people at the time considered innocent. Did y'all know just an innocent phrase? People talk like that. On the other hand, the tongue can be used to teach the gospel. Encourage the discourage, rebuke the sinner, heal the hurting, and give testimony to the lost. Solomon wrote, A word aptly spoken is like apples of gold and settings of silver. I had to write the scriptures down because what we were just what clicking apples yesterday, right? Mm -hmm. A word right on time, amen, is like apples of gold in a setting of silver. The fact that the scriptures in the Bible leads me to believe that when we get to heaven, I believe that there's going to be some fruit that looks like gold apples when we get to heaven. Things that when we get to heaven is going to blow your mind. I'm like, I want that gold apple, please. Can I have that gold one, please? And I think a silver one, but with God, and I just want to see what it looks like and what it tastes like. Things in heaven are just going to blow our minds. And man, that's Proverbs 25, 11, if anybody want to check it. And that's why James made an appeal for speech that is controlled, pure, positive, and consistent. I can tell your spiritual maturity by the words that's coming out of your mouth. Proverbs 18, 21. The tongue has the power of life and death. Yes. And those who love it will eat its fruit. Yes. I, I, am, I, am, I have turned, I'm not going to be a, a cursing preacher. I told y'all a couple weeks ago, I man, I know a bunch of cursing preachers. Cursing pastors, curse, cursing apostles, cursing bishops. Oh, you just, I'm just you, man. I gotta keep it real. No, you're showing me your spirit. Right. If you can't marshal your own tongue, then what else are you not marshaling? What else are you keeping it real with? I can't trust you. So, not speaking certain things is a victory of whereas we're not cursing ourselves or others. As I always say, we need to learn how to speak less and only speak what is necessary. Jesus never gave his opinion. He only spoke the truth. Yes. Come on, come on. But the fact that we have the thoughts at all is another problem or issue that we at least need to be aware of. Even if you don't speak certain things, the fact that you are thinking it, you need to address that as well. Because what we wrestle with in our mind is really not a mental or biological situation all the time. The Bible says, out of the heart, the mind speaks. So if you are a liar, it stems from a lying heart. Come on. Yes. Come on. If you are always speaking envious and jealous types of words and phrases, you have an envious and jealous heart. And sometimes we say spirit. Glory to God. If you are always speaking perverted type of words, then you have a perverted heart. If you're always speaking fearful rhetoric, you have the heart of a coward. That's it. Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Glory to God. That's why you have to watch your words. I'm always, I always take notice of people that are always, they're always scared of everything. everything. You can't operate like that. God didn't give us a spirit of fear. Yes, Lord. But power of love. In the sound of mind. Glory to God. Especially when I hear it in men. Glory to God. Moses told Joshua, be strong and very courageous. And that's why women, let your boys be men. Stop trying to tell them and correct them. No, just let them be a man. We're going to learn. Let them be a man. Glory to God. No, man. You try to bribe beat them. Just chill. He's going to get it. They're going to grow up. They're going to get it. But let that man be the man that he's going to be. Glory to God. You're a woman. You're different. Men and women are different. Amen. We're not the same. Yes. Glory to God. And we have to be very careful. Because you can make that man, that young boy, weak. That's the problem in our generation. <laughs> I ain't going to go there today. 
Proverbs 4, 23 to 27. Above all else, guard your heart. For everything you do flows from it. Right. Keep your mouth free of perversity. Keep corrupt talk far from your lips. Let your eyes look straight ahead and fix your gaze directly before you. Give careful thought to the paths for your feet and be steadfast in all your ways. Do not turn to the right or to the left, but keep your foot from evil. That's Proverbs chapter 4, verses 23 to 27 for those that are writing it down. And to guard your heart means what? It means to fill it with the truth. Yeah. And then make sure that you guard that truth so that you do not forget it on the know. Guard your heart means you will be nourishing the new nature and starving the old nature so that your behavior will be righteous. And when I say righteous, I mean that you will be in right standing with God. My God, my God. Guarding your heart, amen, what does it mean to guard your heart? In the Old Testament, the word heart is used more than 800 times. But more than 200 times, it deals with one's thought life. So your heart and your mental is connected. Emotions, the well springs of life, those things that motivate and mold us. The Bible calls that the heart. I'm calling it the thought life. And why is the thought life so important? Why does Solomon tell his son, above all else, guard your heart, but out of it are the issues of life? Because the thought life controls the rest of your life. Yes. Yes, sir. All right? yes. Solomon didn't say, oh yeah, and by the way, one of the things I want you to do, son, is to do this. He didn't do that. He said, above all else, Solomon, the wisest man that had ever been born besides Jesus, he instructed his son, above all else, guard your heart. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. For out of it flows the issue of life. Oh you better watch. Let allow people into your heart. You gotta stop. Listen. Allowing, amen. It's okay, amen, to be compassionate, but you can't be too soft hearted. Because you want to be the one that's going to have heart disease and all of these different things because you allow everything to get so deep into your heart. Yeah. You better learn how to how to be a little bit tougher. Grow up, tough, mature. Life ain't easy, and it ain't going to be easy for you. And so we got to know how to take a licking and keep on taking and stop taking things so personal. Mm. I know that's not a word we like to hear. Glory to God. If you tell me what you think, I'll tell you who you are and the life that you live. You ever notice that some people are so attractive until you hear what they think about certain things? Oh, my God. It turns you off. <laughs> it turns you off. Like, wow, I thought that person was so good, but then I hear her talking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Ah, I don't believe she feel that way about that. Uh, I'm out of here. Glory to God. Praise God. That's why you have to get to know a person. I don't know how people are in relationships and you don't have the people around. Glory to God. We need to know how they want to act in certain situations. What they want to say. What do they want to do? How do you know this person? Yes, God. You got to take time and spend time putting them in different situations. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Praise God. When they act out, you can't blame nobody but yourself because you didn't hold them up to a standard. I need you to come around. You need to spend some time. I want you to spend some time around my family. I want to see what you do around my daughter. Well, I want you to see what is happening there. I want to see it all around my sons. I want you to see it around my mother, my father. I want you to see my sister, my brother. I want you to see what you want to do. I want to see who you really are. Right. I want to see you a little bit when you a little angry. I want to see how you act. How many know that's necessary? Yes, I want to see what you do when you're happy, when you get somebody in the bank. Are you the kind of person you want to spend it all on alcohol and drugs? You want to burn? Go to the go to the clubs now? You want to be with your boys now? I need to see. I need to know. Who are you? Yeah. Yes, Lord. Are you gonna cuss me out when you're angry or what? Or we still gonna be okay? Above all else, guard your heart. What you think is what you are, and the thought life controls you. If, again, that Proverbs twenty three seven: As a man thinketh in his heart. So is he. That scripture used to, used to vex me until I understood that the scripture was saying that we really are, it's not the mind that thinks these things, our thoughts is generated in our heart. Mm -hmm. and, and it comes up through our mind. Your thought controls your actions. All good psychologists would tell you that someone once said, so a thought, we a deed. So a deed, we a habit. So a habit, we a character. 
So a character, we have a destiny. Glory to God. But it all starts with the thoughts. Amen. You can't do something unless you first think about it. Yes. Jeffrey Dahmer, glory to God, eating people. He thought about it, and he thought about it well, all the ways he was going to do it, before he decided to kill people and put them in the refrigerator and chop them up and eat them and serve them as hamburgers and all that other crazy stuff. Why are you even thinking about stuff like that? <laughs> I was messing with my son the other day. He watched the series on TV. I'm like, why are you even watching that? He said, oh, it's a good show, though. I'm like, Ugh. Maybe because I grew up while Jeffrey Dahmer was alive and it kind of just, uh, it's not even interesting to me. I don't even want to, it was nasty. He was demon possessed. It's despicable. But before you can do a thing, you have to think about it. Do you know that? Thoughts are things. In the old church, I used to throw something. And man, I take my keys. Every time he thinks about something, amen, it's a thought. I would throw something, amen? It's literally a thought. In the spirit world, how many know God can see your thoughts? Amen. <laughs> the thoughts leads to attitudes. And attitudes leads to actions. Yes. Actions leads to those achievements. But it all begins with the thought life. Tell your neighbor, watch your thoughts. Your achievements will be the sum total of your thoughts. If you believe it, you can receive it. Yes, God. This is so fundamental that God destroyed an entire civilization because they had heart trouble. Glory to God. Anybody know what this chapter is from? And God saw that the wickedness of man was great on the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was evil continually before God. Anybody know what chapter that's from? It's the book of Genesis. From the beginning, we have heart trouble. Yes. That's Genesis 6 5. A good person will speak good words and thoughts. A bad person won't. A person of faith will always speak hopeful and faithful words. A person outside of faith will speak words outside of the faith of God. You can tell a person that really trusts in God because they'll say, Don't worry, God's going to do it. Don't worry, honey. God got you. He may not come when you want him, but he always come on time. Trust God. Lean not to your own understanding. And all your ways acknowledge him. Hey, Amen. You can tell a person that's full of faith, a person that's full of the word, glory to God, most of the times, amen, will be full of faith. But again, faith is for this world, and sight is for the world to come. God got so angry at us in the beginning that he wiped us out, was about to wipe us out entirely. Yes. But because of mercy, mm -hmm. amen, we're still here. Yes. Glory to God. And when the scripture says the thoughts of his heart was evil continually before yeah. God, as Genesis 6, 5. So from the beginning, before we had computers and internet and all that, we had evil thoughts. From the beginning, because we're born in sin, shed in the and so we have to watch our thoughts, watch our mind. It doesn't matter what your eye sees in this world if your mind is asleep, though. And that's why we have to keep our minds on Jesus and keep our minds in and on the Word of God. Glory to God. As I already taught you, the heart and the mind are connected, right? Yeah. So we have to be disciplined in what we allow into our hearts yeah. or to affect our hearts. And we have to be disciplined in what we think about. And that means we have to learn how to delete some things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why? Because the mind replays what the heart can't delete. The mind replays what the heart can't delete. If you allow your heart to delete that relationship, delete that man, delete that woman, delete that time in your life, delete that drug habit you had, delete it, delete it, delete it. But if you keep replaying it, the mind replays what the heart deletes. It's a heart issue. You didn't say, oh, I just can't stop thinking about it. No, you, you got to change your heart, my brother, my sister. Change your heart about it. Forgive that person. Let them go. Let go and let God, as they say. Let it go. But you keep holding on to it, and that's why you have problems today. You know that God gives you energy for, for every day, a certain amount of energy for every day? Do it to God. And so you went through it. Whatever it was, you made it through the 
divorce. You made it through that death. You made it through that calamity or whatever the case is. You already made it through. They lied on you. They talked about you. Betrayed you. You made it through. So let it go. God gave you energy to get through it. But what happens is now we five years past it, seven years past it, and we still bring it back up. And so the energy that God has already given you to get through that day is gone. And that's when you get depressed. And that's when you get sick. And that's when cancer, and that's when all that comes up. Because you keep bringing up the same old stuff. Let it go. Yes, let it go. Hallelujah. Same old stuff. Some people I can't talk to about certain issues. Because I know they're about to go back. I'm like, if you don't stop bringing that same old stuff up, let it go. I've been through some bad stuff too. I'm not going to talk your head off about it. It's gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm in a new season of my life. I ain't going to talk about the person and all of that. It was cool while I was there. I went through it and I'm still alive. Whatever don't kill me, made me stronger. <laughs> now I have endurance and now I can last longer. Oh yeah. And so my advice as I have to shut this down is pray about it as much as you think about it. Mm. I'll say it again. Pray about it as much as you think about it. Mm. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, pray about it as much as you think about it. Pray about it as much as you think about it. <laughs> Philippians 4 8 instructs us to think on those things that are true, honorable, just, pure, lovely, commendable, and worthy of praise. If there is anything of excellence and worthy of praise, we are to think on these things. Don't the Bible direct us on how we ought to think? Amen. Yeah. You don't have to go spend hundreds of dollars with some psychologist. I don't know what I should think about. The Bible told you to think on these things. Get that hundred dollars to Jesus. <laughs> Glory to God. Listen, good thoughts always lead to a grateful heart. Yeah. Yes. Grateful heart. And how grateful are we of what God has given us? I have to leave it here. How grateful are we? Of what God has given us. That's a deep and serious question. I mean it. How would others do with what God gave you? <laughs> how would others do for those of us that are ungrateful? How would how would others do if they had the husband that you have? What would other people do with the wife that God gave you? What would other people do with the career that God gave you? What would other people do with the looks that God gave you? What would other people do with the children that God blessed you with? What would other people do with the connections that God has given you? What would other people do if they were blessed, amen, with the family that you were born in? Right. That's so I wish y'all would hear me this morning. Yeah. What would other people do with the voice that God gave you? Right. What would other people do with the ability in your hands that God has given you? Come on, come on. What would other people do Glory to God, with the glory to God, the abilities, amen, amen, that God has given to just you. We take so much for granted. Nice. Do you know that there are people that would love to have the house that you are that you always complain about? You know there are other people that would love to have that car that you always complain about? You know there are other people that would love to have the husband that you always put down? Do you know that there are people out there that would love to have that wife that you care and then find love for? Do you know that there are other people that will love to be in your shoes? There are other people that will love to have this situation. And that's why we have to learn how to say, I don't mind. I don't mind. Go to God. Amen. What I'm going through right now. Yes, Lord. Because I know as long as God is for me, don't do me against me. I know that no weapon for against me shall prosper. And every tongue that has risen against me in judgment, I'm going to condemn. I know that God wishes to prosper me, not to harm me, yes, and to bring me to an expected end. Yes. Hallelujah. I'm going to leave it there for this morning. Glory to God. There's so much. Hallelujah. I don't know how much of this we're receiving. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But we have to watch our minds, our thoughts. Our mindset can keep us upset. When yes. our mind is not stayed on Jesus. Yes. But I believe that God wants us to be more disciplined. Amen. Because again, if we're disciplined, we won't need deliverance. I know we got the book out, the battle of the mind, and all of that, all this kind of stuff. Amen. 
but it's really very, it's rather simple if we hold on to the principle that's in the Bible. Yes. If we allow more of God to be in us than that's of the world, I mean, it will be okay. Amen. If we allow the word of God to be what permeates our heart more than the word of man, how many know we'll be all right? Because good thoughts, hallelujah, lead to a good life. God, we bless you for the word on this morning. We honor you even right now. Hallelujah. Father God, we bless you, Father God, Lord, that, oh God, you're speaking to us this morning about our mind and our mindset. And I pray that even right now, everyone under the sound of my voice, Hallelujah. That Father God, that they will make it up in their mind, God, Lord, that they're going to keep their mind stay on you. They're going, to, they're going to make it up in their mind that they're going to keep their mind stay on Jesus. He said, let this mind be in you that is also in Christ Jesus. So God, we pray, Father God, Lord, even my matter of fact, God, we apologize. Hallelujah. For allowing our mindsets to be of such low a state. Hallelujah, Father God, Lord, that we honor the devil. Oh God, instead of I and you. Yeah. Oh God, we're not going to speak negative against ourselves anymore, God. We're not going to speak anything, God, Lord, against our, our neighbor, God, no. We're going to be encouraging, God, Lord, instead of discouraging. Oh God, we're going to speak life instead of death. We're going to speak health instead of sickness. Oh God, we're going to stop cursing ourselves and making pacts with, with the enemy, God. Yeah. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. We pray that you seize in our words. Even right now. And even right now, at the sound of my voice, I pray that every word curse that has been sent to us be canceled right now in the name of Jesus. Every word that's sent by in the air, I pray, Father God, Lord, hallelujah, that it is freezed. Hallelujah, God, Lord, it disintegrate. I pray every word that's sent through water, hallelujah, I pray, God, Lord, that blocks of ice be freezing. Hallelujah, and burned by the Holy Ghost fire, even now, God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, anything that's not like God, hallelujah, I pray that you deal with it. Even right now, God, hallelujah, as only you can. Oh, God, we walk by faith and not by sight. Hey, God, we're going to trust you even when, God, we don't understand. Yes. We're going to trust you when we can't trust you. Yes, we're going to trust you even when, Father God, Lord, it don't feel good. Hallelujah. We're going to lean on you. And that's all our understanding. In all our ways, we're going to acknowledge you. Yes, Lord. And knowing that it is you and you only that can direct our path. I pray that you open our ears. I ask everybody just touch your ears right now. Touch your ears. I pray that you just open our ears. Hallelujah. From the pulpit to the door, from the balcony to the floor. Sometimes we just have a trouble hearing. We say, faith comes by you. Hearing by the word of God. I pray, God, Lord, when you give us a command, when you speak, that it is your voice and your voice only that we will hear. And not only that we will hear, but that we will hear with understanding. In Jesus' name. We bless you. And we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. We say amen. Amen. amen and amen. Hallelujah. Give God a hand clap. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you're watching me, praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. You need to be saved. Glory to God. If you have not accepted Jesus Christ, into your heart as your Lord and personal Savior. You, sir, you man, need to be saved. If not, when you die, praise God, hallelujah, the sight that you see on the other side will not be heaven, will not be God. Amen. It will be hell. Amen. And it will be, amen, Satan and his demons. Amen. So we, I would like to invite you today, amen, to give your life to Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Even after you've heard this faith-filled message, glory to God. Amen. So that, amen, heaven can be your home eternally. Amen. Glory to God. And that you can live a life that is pleasing to God. Amen. The Bible says that you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is the raised from the dead, you shall be saved. So I invite you to do this even more. Now, it's a simple prayer, sir. It's a simple prayer, ma'am. And it goes like this. If you would pray with me, it goes like this. Father God, Father it's God. me, your child. It's me, your child. Lord God, Lord God. Forgive me for all of my sins. Forgive me for all my sins. Known and unknown. Known and unknown. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Come into my heart. Into my heart. Here and be my Lord and personal Savior. And be my Lord and personal Savior. I choose life. I choose life. I reject death. I reject death. I choose heaven. I choose heaven. I reject hell. I reject hell. Lord God. Lord God. Please write my name. Please write my name. In the last book of life. In the last book of life. With the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your grace. And even mercy. And even mercy. For allowing me to be able to say this prayer. One today. And mean it.
In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God another hand clap. And somebody just give God some praise. Come on. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. We praise God. We bless God. Hallelujah. And we thank God. If you just got saved, I congratulate you, sir, ma'am. Glory to God. Amen. You are now my brother and my sister. Amen. I invite you, amen, amen, to come on out and fellowship with us here at Harvest House. Restoration Center, we are 410 North Hanover Street, Carlisle, Pennsylvania, 17013. Amen. But if you're not close to us, find a Bible teaching, Bible believing church. Get in there and allow yourself to be disciples. We bless you and we honor you. God, in your life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let us all stand as we receive Mother Dunstan. Go to God. Amen. Who will give us the benediction.